Today's video was sponsored by Pop Culture Zone Pressing Services. If you need your comic books pressed, I personally vouch for Pop Culture Zone as being one of the best professional companies in the game, offering hands down the lowest prices out there. Services start at only $9.99, and every order place will receive free fast track turnaround times. Even though I press comics for my personal collection, whenever I need a professional press for my key comics, I send them off to Pop Culture Zone and every single book that I've received back, every single one has had results that have exceeded my expectations and I am sure that they will exceed your expectations as well. Make sure you go check the link in the description below to head over to their website, popculturezone.com for complete details on services and how to begin your order. What is going on everyone? Chris with Journal's Comics of Pop Culture. I'm sitting here in my dining room and I got this package in the mail and I'm here to discuss how this seller shipped this comic book that's in here. Before we get into it, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the links in the description below as well. But folks, I bought this book off of uh, Whatnot. I want it in an auction. And this seller ships it first class in nothing but a little, what, what, what do you call these, uh, manila envelope, right? Because everyone always complains. I'm in Facebook groups. I'm a part of this community. I see the online forums. If you're not using Gemini mailers, you're doing it wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I even have videos of how you can get around using Gemini mailers, but I usually do use Gemini mailers myself for books that are, um, you, you know, what, like six to a mailer. Uh, also, if I have an order that's maybe 12 books, sometimes I might even put six books in one Gemini, six books in another, and put them in a, like a flat rate, medium flat rate box or something like that. But that's besides the point. So everyone lives and dies by these Gemini mailers, and they say, I'm tired of people doing it otherwise. But we're gonna look at what this individual did here. Now, I, I only have one hand. I'm doing this uh, lo-fi, so to say. I didn't bring out my phone stand or anything. So you got cut up USPS boxes. It looks like there's two pieces here, two pieces there underneath. So the book's gonna be somewhere in the middle here, I'm sure. Okay, there's the packaging slip. We're gonna move that out. So again, Two pieces of, oh wait, nope, one, two, three. Three pieces, so it's very sturdy, very sturdy. And then he's got, oh, let's pull this out. All right, three more pieces, one, two, three, I can see that there with the book in a mylar, in a mylar, and uh, you got painter's tape attached. So. The book is obviously not going in, like, I mean, I can, I could throw this, bang it. It's, it's not moving off of this uh, painter's tape. And I even, look, I even undid that and it's still not moving. So let's open it up. The, the cardboard is at least about an inch uh, wider on each side from the comic book. Let's see what I got. Do I remember what I ordered? Oh, that's the, let's see, what did I order? Oh, yes. I swear I have uh, one of these, but who cares? I had some whatnot credits. It's a Fantasy Masterpieces number one. This is the reprinting of Silver Surfer number one, his original volume one Silver Age series. It is a nice sharp copy. Look at that. That is clean. That is really clean. Anyways, the point of this video isn't the book, guys. Um, I'm going to say it like this. This individual shipped this book to me in a way that allowed, and it was first class. I can't show you guys because it has my personal information. Shipped first class. It came to me in perfectly fine condition. It was well protected. It had... Um, Painter's tape instead of, you know, I always use painter's tape. Uh, so it was easy for me to remove without damaging the book. Putting it in a mylar absolutely helps. Um, the cardboard was cut at a proper size. 
and three of them because you know this cardboard is a bit thinner than not necessarily even thinner but because it's um i don't know what you actually call this where it has that i mean all cardboard does i, I believe but the gemini mailers are a little more sturdy but maybe maybe not by much because believe me i've bent gemini mailers simply when i was like you know folding them you know to get books in you don't need to live and die by gemini mailers now i i get it like there's a safety a sense of a safety net when using them because they are very um very much the industry standard for a reason you get that extra flap that's inside of it that gives not only extra protection uh, the extra two flaps that go over it it gives it extra protection but also um it gives it a lot less space to move around okay so it's definitely worth the money like i i buy in bulk i think at this i mean they've gone up in price a lot over the last few years but i think i could still get them at like 75 to 83 cents each or something like that so i mean it's it's money you know uh, it's a cost whereas what this individual did was you get these for free um i don't know you could probably buy these in bulk and get them for a pretty dirt cheap and then you use a little painter's tape so this is a much more affordable way and uh you know to save sellers money but it's okay. It's okay to do it like this, in my humble opinion. But here's the asterisk. If you do do it like this, you got to make sure you're doing it in a right way that's not going to, you know, come back and bite the seller in the butt. Because too many people do take shortcuts. Too many people think that you can maybe like cut up a box and take a comic and put it on one, even if you tape it, just put it on one and put it in a manila envelope. You're exposing the comic that's not gonna work. A lot of people take two, right? And they don't tape it and the book slides, and they put it in a manila envelope and the book slides around and you end up getting a corner that, that stuck out and when it was being thrown around in the mail, it dings. That's what the Gemini mailers, for the most part, uh, stop because of those extra folds that come in, right? Um, sometimes people only use one each. Maybe it's tape. Maybe it's not sliding around. But again, it's not as sturdy with just having one on each side, one cardboard on each side. That is less sturdy than a Gemini mailer because remember again, the Gemini mailer has multiple layers. You have the two flaps that flap over. You have the bottom layer and then you have the two side flaps that you close and tape up. So you still get extra protection. Just cutting out something like this and using two, this can be bent in the mail. And I've seen it happen. I've seen horror stories. But here's the thing too, Gemini mailers as well. I've seen Gemini mailers get bent. But of course, that's going to happen um, very, very minimally comparative to just one little board on each side. Now also remember when you're cutting up boxes, you got this weak this is a, a weak spot. So if you have the book like this and the book or the cardboard that you're using to protect it already has a weak spot, it's vulnerable. At, it's going to be vulnerable at that spot when it's being moved around and thrown around. So again, I am all about toning it down and saying we don't need to live by Gemini mailers. But like I said, they are standard for a reason. And if you are getting creative with how you're going to ship your comics you got to make sure you do it right you take the time and you add enough protection to make sure that that book is going to get to your buyer just the way that it was when it left your hands that's my advice today let me know what you all think in the comments below sweet book thank you guys for watching be well and until next time